we should begin. Right, just a second. I am going to get myself shared. And of course, I click out the window. I apologize. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, uh, greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for having me today. I am so excited to speak with you all in regards to Paul Quinn College. As Ms. Shree stated, my name is Taylor Henley. I am an enrollment management officer at Paul Quinn College, home of the Quinnite Nation. Um, I am also actually an alumna of this institution. So as I speak about Paul Quinn, um, it is definitely something that is near and very dear to my heart. So if it seems like I am gushing a little bit or I seem like I'm actually speaking from experience, I really am speaking from experience because this is the college that really and truly um, made me the woman that I am today. And I am so appreciative of the time and just the energy that people put into me while I was a student when I just because at the end of the day, there were times that I didn't, in fact, believe in myself. And there were people that are now actually my colleagues that were right behind me that said, hey, I know you can do this. This is not something that you, you know, you should just give up easily on and really kind of cheered me on in those moments when I did not want to cheer for myself. So like I said, PQC is very near and dear to my heart outside of me just being an employee of Paul Quinn College. Um, I am very much so big on the whole culture of who we are as an institution, as well as historically black colleges and universities, just due to the fact that I am actually a fourth generation HBCU alumna on my father's side, and then a third generation HBCU alumna on my mother's side. So literally all I know is honestly HBCUs. And so I did not, of course, want to go to one of their bigger HBCUs, but I found the perfect fit at Paul Quinn College because it was a small family environment that I needed, but also also allowed me to be in a large city to where I was really able to not only be in a place where I was able to be in the same city as my parents because my parents lived in Richardson, but I was actually able to leave the nest and be on campus um, here at main campus in Dallas. So I will go ahead and get started and give you a little bit of history about who we are at PQC. So PQC is the Oldest historically black college in the state of Texas and oldest uh, HBCU west of the Mississippi River. Uh, we have a very rich history. We were founded on 18, uh, sorry, April 4th of 1872. So we will be celebrating 150 years of existence next year. And the things that the college has planned are quite exciting. I uh, can't tell in a share, but the things that are going to be happening are just humongous and grand because, of course, 150 years is a long time. So we're making it a big celebration, especially because it'll probably be the first time that we'll be able to actually be back together since our Founders Day of 2019 due to the pandemic and just not being able to safely be with one another at the time. So uh, we, like I said, we were founded on April 4th in 1872 by a group of AME preachers in Austin, Texas. Most people actually know Paul Quinn College for being located in Waco, Texas, because that is actually where we spent most of our time as an institution. So from 1877 until 1990 is actually when we uh, stayed in Waco or we were in Waco, excuse me. And then in 1990, we moved to Dallas, which is the current campus, as well as the sign that's actually my background is our main campus signage. The purpose of Paul Quinn was to, in fact, you know, actually provide education to freed slaves and their offspring. So at initially, excuse me, at the beginning of our existence, we were actually more focused on vocational training so that, you know, those people that were actually our students were able to find and learn how to do other things other than just be sharecroppers. So we wanted to make sure that they had the actual training to be able to be successful and so that vocational training was there with a few liberal arts coursework now as we are our institution of today we have now of course you know really had that liberal arts faith-based um, education that is still here today that provides students and actually addresses the needs that a student has, whether it be academic, social, but also do it in a fundamental way by using our Christian beliefs. 
Now, the way that we are today in 2021 under the leadership of President Michael J. Sorrell, who is Oof, man, if you've ever heard him speak or you've ever seen any videos of him, you know he is a dynamic individual and a dynamic personality. Under his leadership, though, we've really truly become an innovative and inspiring small college in the United States. We, like I said, are small, we're private, and we're faith-based, but like we said, we're liberal arts inspired, but we're really providing students with a reality-based education. And our goal is to always provide justice as inspiration so because we, at the end of the day, want to end generational poverty. And we, at the end of the day, know at Paul Quinn College that poverty is not ended by education that like some people preach and also tell. But at the end of the day, we know that money cures poverty. And so our students are actually able to come to an institution that one believes that, but also provides them with the option to actually graduate with less than $10,000 in student debt when the national median is actually $25,000. So in 2015, we actually adopted what we call a new financial model or what we call excuse me the urban college model which is a new financial structure where students are actually able to not only obtain their actual degree but they also have a job that is typically applicable to their actual major so basically you're having the chance to have subject matter mastery which is like i said your degree or your education but you also have the opportunity to have experiential mastery which is going to be a job that is actually applicable to your major. So let's say for those students that may be um, looking to actually be an educator. So they're a part of our liberal arts programming with a pathway to teacher certification. Those students would then probably work in one of our actual partners that's actually a school. Or let's say one of our students that may be uh, an, a business major with a concert or business administration major with a concentration on fundraising and philanthropy. That student may work at one of our nonprofit sponsors. The way that our students are actually graduating with that less than $10,000 in debt is due to the fact that during their junior and senior year or whenever they're deemed work corporate work program ready, they're moving into positions that are actually paying scholarships that can be anywhere from $10,000 to 15,000 in academic year. So what that basically means and kind of give you an idea, our cost sits right at about 17,700, 800, 17,000, excuse me, $800. My apologies, y'all, it's been a long day of presentations. And so when you look at that cost being at that 17,800 number, and then you look at a student that may be in one of our sponsorships, that is a $15,000 level scholarship. That is literally a student looking at $2,800 of responsibility prior to even bringing in the federal aid that they may receive. Let's say that student is a full Pell student and will be receiving the $6,495 for Pell at 100%. So then you look at that, only $2,800 has to come out of that $6,495. So literally, students are able to literally have a refund check only from their actual federal pill money that they have during that junior and senior year. We've actually seen students that have actually been a part of this model from the beginning. So typically their freshman and sophomore year, they're on campus, which the uh, scholarship funds are at literally capped at, or typically capped, excuse me, at $5,000 per academic year, but they're working on campus. And then they're moving to actual corporate work program sponsorships during junior, senior year. Those students are actually utilizing the refunds that they're receiving during their actual junior and senior year to the debt that they may have actually incurred during their freshman and sophomore year. So that's how our students are actually graduating with less than $10,000 in debt. And when I'm saying that, I'm not saying just a few students. Literally 80% of our students are actually graduating with less than $10,000 in student debt. So if funds is something that you're actually thinking about when you're making the actual decision about colleges and everything else, we are private, but we are focused on pricing as well as making sure that you're as, as successful as you possibly can be when it comes to actually graduating from Paul Quinn. Also, 78% of our students are actually graduating with jobs upon completion. So basically what we're seeing is that our students are actually having this chance to one, build their corporate resume, 
but they're also obtaining corporate experience that corporations are looking for. Us having our work college designation from the federal government provides students with four years of actual experience when they're on campus with us. So unfortunately, we know that employers want brand new employees or you know entry level employees, but they want you to have three to five years of corporate experience. The way that we're really able to have our students go into these places and actually land these jobs is due to the fact that we have that work college designation as well as they're having the four years of corporate work experience. Because even if a student is on campus at the time, they're still technically considered to be in the actual, in a corporate work program job, because at the end of the day, they're at, or excuse me, not corporate work program, I apologize, a work program job due to the fact that we actually have the designation. So it's really twofold when it comes to, you know, uh, coming to Paul Quinn College and obtaining a degree, because not only are you obtaining the actual education, you're actually having the assistance when it comes to tuition, but you're also having the assistance when it comes to jobs, because jobs are looking at you as, oh, okay, you've been working at a place such as, let's say, for one of our business accounting students, you've been working at J.P. Morgan Chase, which typically those students actually get hired on at J.P. Morgan Chase, but in the event that they did not want to to actually work for J.P. Morgan Chase, they actually apply somewhere else, and then they're able to be seen in a light that they're actually been they've actually been successful in a role that is outside of a regular college job, but also being in a place where okay, you obtained your actual degree in your education but you also work the whole time that you actually did it. And that's really who we are and why we are the way we are. Because at the end of the day, for us, as you see um, right there on that actual picture, we over me is a really big thing for us. And it's actually the college's ethos, which basically means the wants of the community supersede, or so, excuse me, the needs of the community supersede the wants of the individual. And so that basically means is, what our students need is what we care about most. And it's not about what the institution needs, but it's what our student body needs. And the other thing that we actually do, uh, go by a lot, as you see the leave, lead, live, and love, that's our four L's of Quinite leadership, which are leave places better than you found them, lead from wherever you are, live a life that matters, and loving something greater than yourself. And that's really truly how we do everything that we do. And like, you know, just from leaving places is better than we found them. I know we have our We Over Me farm that was basically in order for us to address the fact that we were located in a federally recognized food desert, which means there was no place where people of the community or our students could actually find fresh, you know, produce and vegetables to actually have within a five mile radius of the area. And so that was a way that we wanted to, you know, leave places better than we found it, but we were also leading from where we are. And then living a life that matters, you know, what we do honestly on a day-to-day -day basis here at the college is really truly something that we live a life that matters because at the end of the day, we're reaching out to students and we're doing the things for the community that need to be done. We've been a COVID testing site since June of last year, once we really figured out that, you know, this was something that needed to be done, as well as there were no true testing sites prior to our testing site being uh, established in June of 2020, that there were none south of I-30 for the black and brown communities of this area. And so we wanted to really do something for the community and just show that we truly love this area. And once again, loving something greater than ourselves is really what we go for and really what we use to show who we are as well as just what we are to the actual community. Now, this is probably one of my very favorite parts about who we are as an institution, just because we have an extremely vibrant uh, campus community, just because at the end of the day, yes, we are small, but we have truly like a real true family environment that is always focused on making sure that everything is best for our student body. So our um, student life and campus community is actually um, done through our SEAL office or what we call our Center for Civic Engagement, Entrepreneurship and Leadership. When you become a Quinite, you will learn that we love a good acronym and SEAL is just one of those very many acronyms that you'll learn as you become a Quinite. But at the end of the day, um, our SEAL office basically does all planning. So anything that it comes to any of our clubs, any of our sororities and fraternities, which we do have the Divine Nine on campus, um, as well as other fraternities and sororities as well. 
All of our events that happen on campus are something that's actually facilitated through the SEAL office. And these are just a few flyers of things that we've had. So like when Ice Cube was actually promoting his last barbershop movie, we had him or we hosted him on campus. We had our Greek Unity Night, which is the middle photo. We've actually hosted uh, Kiki Palmer on campus before with our Voices That Matter a series that we actually hold every year. And then we have various pictures of our soccer team as well as our basketball, um, one of our basketball players that um, actually just recently graduated in December. So I need to actually uh, update that photo because he's now a graduate of Paul Quinn College. But then we just have some of our other events and uh, we over, our what a time, excuse me, was our homecoming event in our homecoming theme one year, and then our big kickball game, which honestly, some of these things are things that typically happen in the fall, but we've been unable to have just due to COVID-19. But we are keeping our fingers crossed and keeping prayers up that come uh, fall of 2021, we are able to move forward and to welcome everyone back and have everyone involved. Now, just to, to touch on the actual uh, sports that we do uh, play at the college, um, as far as programs we offer, we do have basketball, cross country, soccer, track and field, and volleyball. And uh, one thing that I do kind of want to add to the whole um, thing about clubs and, you know, teams and everything else, you know, we are very big at the college about closed mouths don't get fed. And so if you see something that is actually not available at the college that you want to be a part of or that you want to begin we strongly, strongly encourage students to do those things. Soccer is actually a very good example of that. Soccer was not, in fact, an actual program, a sports program at the college prior to 2017. It actually started with a group of students that just wanted to play soccer. They actually started playing as a club, and then they winded up doing really, really well on the club level. And then when they did really well and they came back to the college, they actually said, we want to become a team. And they actually are now a school-sponsored sport. So it just goes to show you that when you show leadership at Paul Quinn College that you are a force to be reckoned with and you have everything that should be aligned and everything that should be the way that it is, we really truly have that to where our students really lead everything that they do on campus. And that's one of the beautiful things about being a Quinnite because you're not just an ID number, you're a voice and you're a voice that matters and you're a voice that is listened to because at the end of the day, it's always about your experience and making sure that it is the best one possible. Also, with the um, actual sports that we have on campus, we are a member of the NAIA Division I or the Red River Athletics Conference, and we're also a member of the United States Collegiate Athletic Association Division I. So I have to slow down whenever I say that just because I always tongue-tie myself on that one. But those are basically the members that we are, excuse me, the actual divisions that we're a part of and the conferences that we're a part of with those actual athletic programming. Now, this is going to probably be my favorite slide just because I'm a little bit of a nerd at the end of the day. So uh, this is all about our academic programs that we actually offer. So we have our business administration. It has four concentrations, which are going to be accounting, entrepreneurship, fundraising and philanthropy and management, which is actually the degree that I hold from the college. We have our health and wellness degree, which is actually going to actually have an option for a teacher certification. So if you are looking to become an educator, and become maybe like a PE teacher, or if you were looking to actually coach within the school system, that would actually be an option for you. We have our legal studies and criminology, which is going to be like a pre-law program. We have our religious studies, our liberal arts with concentrations on communications, general studies, history, mathematics, political science, and psychology. And then you also have our teacher certi pathway to teacher certification for early childhood through sixth grade. Um, so just in case you're looking at this and you see the difference between the um, liberal arts with the BS, uh, Bachelor of Science, excuse me, in liberal arts, that's actually just going to be for the actual mathematics only, but they still actually all fall underneath the liberal arts degree program. Now, as far as this portion of it, you know, this is the other favorite part about it, just because this is when I get a chance to have you talk about, or I get a chance, excuse me, to talk about having you join the Quinite Nation. Now, of course, you guys can't 
get into this link and click the screen and get to it. But if I have any underclassmen, you can always join our mailing list and scan that um, QR code or screenshot the QR code and use it later to where you can actually join our mailing list to get any of the updates about the college. Uh, as far as if I have my seniors that are here, class of 2021, this part is for you. So if you want to reach out to me at any time, you most definitely can. Um, you can reach me via cell phone, via email, however you prefer to speak to me. Uh, it's the your uh, option, even if it's an Instagram DM or comment on Instagram, you can definitely do that. As far as our requirements for students to actually come in, it is going to be a 275 a GPA on a 4.0 scale. If you do not have that, do not let that deter you from actually applying because we at Paul Quinn College believe that there is, you know, more to just a student and being uh, actually just looking at just a GPA because we believe in holistic reviews. We are test optional for the uh, fall 2021, spring 2022 year, which is the first time in the college history due to COVID-19 and just understanding the actual battles that you guys have actually faced. We did go test optional this year. We also require a letter of recommendation and a resume due to the fact that we do have that work college designation. Those are items that we ask for because we use your letter of recommendation as we would an actual reference call. And then we use your resume, of course, to see if you've had any jobs or see if you've been involved in anything where we're able to actually find you a good fit for when you first get on campus and actually start working within the job. Now, actually, if you don't have a job or you've never had a job, we then just tell you to create a student resume. So any volunteer opportunities that you've been a part of or any volunteer work that you've done, um, any kind of school sports, clubs or anything else, but, you know, facilitated by the school that you've been involved in, we would then say, go ahead and add that to that resume. Talk about, you know, basically the education that you've received and everything else, and then kind of just use that as a way to formulate that document. And then lastly would be an enrollment management uh, professionals interview with you. And that's typically over the phone or Zoom. And so it's nothing that you have to be nervous about. It's literally all about you, where we just ask you questions about who you are as a student, as well as just getting a chance to get to know you. Now, I know all of that was a lot, so I'm actually going to um, give my information to Ms. Street so that she can provide that to you, as well as I will put it in the chat. Again, my name is Taylor Henley. If you want to take down my number and jot it down really fast, if you have something, it is 214-620-0836. Again, that's 214-620-0836. And you can reach out via text message if that's what you're comfortable with. But I'm also going to provide you with our general college information. But I want you guys to have it, being that this is a presentation that you guys have had with me. I just want to say thank you so much for really and truly, you know, taking the time out to even watch this presentation and be a part of this presentation today. Um, always honestly use me as a resource. I don't expect you to know everything about admissions and recruiting when it comes to college. So even if you feel like it's not a question that you should be asking or it doesn't make sense or anything else like that, it should not make sense for you because at the end of the day, this is not something that you are in fact a part of or something that you do on a regular basis. So we always want you to take the time to actually go ahead and ask the questions that need to be asked and then just move forward with it. I mean, never let anything stop you from asking the right questions because that is always something that is there for you and always something that, you know, we're here for you at any time. And that includes my other office uh, members than my other, uh, you know, co-workers within enrollment management. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to stop sharing my screen real quick. And then I'm also going to kind of jump back in to see if anyone has any questions for me. You guys can ask them via chat and I will stay, or I don't know, I, I'm just saying. Yeah, we're recording, so you're good to go. I do have a question. I think you mentioned earlier um, about grants, um, about the Pell Grant, and I don't know if our students are all familiar with what that is. Can you please explain what the Pell Grant is? Yeah, sure. The Pell Grant is basically the federal aid that you receive 
Um, so I'm not just going to be honest, federal uh, financial aid is not my sandbox, but I can definitely give an overview. Um, but basically, a student is actually able to receive money from the federal government, depending upon whatever their actual rating on the scale that the federal government has created for families. So basically, when you fill out your FAFSA, which is so important, especially when you're talking about going to college, because that's going to be one of the main questions that we ask you is, have you filled out your FAFSA and have you added us to your FAFSA? Because in order for us to be able to tell you what that actual number is for the Pell Grant, for the monies that'll be granted to you, that's actually something that we do in fact need to have um, in order for us to be able to move forward. So basically Pell Grant is the funds that you're provided by actually filling out your FAFSA and then what the federal government is actually allotting for you to utilize um, for your actual education. Thank you so much for that. No problem. Any other questions or anything else? Mr. Watson, do we have anything else before we head out? Okay, well, thank you so much, Taylor, and thank you for providing your information in the chat. So students, um, just take a moment, copy and paste that. And then again, we are recording this, but I look forward to seeing you back again sooner than later. And I look forward to co finally coming back to the campus because that campus is beautiful. <laughs> And if you have seen, if you know our old campus, you're going to be so surprised because the new campus looks totally different from old campus or pre, I should say, pre-2019 campus because wow. it is, everything has changed. Stuff that actually was a parking lot at a time is now a full-on uh, health and wellness center, uh, which will have our new competition gym in it, as well as a brand new redone building, which is going to be our Trammell Escrow Living and Learning Center, which is actually the building where students will actually reside in. It's a residence hall that is actually a collaborative space where they're able to not only be within their actual residence hall, but they also have a space outside of their rooms to actually collaborate and learn together. So yeah, it's it's definitely a time to be a Quinite and everything is changing, but everything is still the same, if that makes sense. So we can't wait to be able to actually welcome everybody back on campus. But as of right now, things are quickly changing and we can't wait for everyone to actually see it that hasn't seen it, <laughs> so. Oh, we have someone coming in, let's see. Um. Is it Shruti? Yeah. Well, um, again, we've recorded this. So hopefully those of you who just got in, um, if you have questions, go ahead and ask before we head out. Oh, I did have a question though. Taylor, do you guys still have an, um, a campus in Plano? How's that? Yes. So, of course, due to the pandemic, um, all of our students have gone virtual, but we do have students that were that will technically be back to our PQC Plano, but we don't actually currently have anyone anyone there like, you know, that's actually located within that living space just due to the fact that all of our students have gone virtual and as well as all of their corporate work program jobs have also went virtual. So they've actually been back home. But yes, we do have plans. Sorry about that. I forgot to mute my phone. Um, we do have plans to actually bring students back to not only main campus, but to PQC Plano. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good. Um, and we do we talk about your corporate sponsors, all of the corporate sponsors that you guys have at this time? Uh, we did not, but I mean, if you want. If I you mean, want to let's start. brag about it. Let's brag about it. <laughs> You know, I, be try, I try not to brag a little bit, but I mean, you know, I tried to like, you know, kind of go in a little bit and give you the actual corporate sponsors. So like just to give you an idea of who our corporate sponsors, which we've actually added some names. So I'm going to name y'all some new ones that you probably didn't know about. So we have partners such as JP Morgan Chase, TXU Energy, uh, NTT Data. We have some new schools that I actually can't 
I almost said it literally. Sorry, I had to slow down real quick. I got excited. But we have some new schools that will actually be a part of the work college, the corporate work program, excuse me. But we actually have had some insurance companies join the actual uh, running for everything. So we have USAA. We, of course, still have Liberty Mutual. We have Dallas, Le Dow I can't talk. Dallas Leadership Foundation. Sorry about that. And then we also have some of our um, other nonprofit members that are branching off and making new corporate, uh, corporate partnerships. So it's really just honestly a cool time, um, as well as we have some stuff that will be going on with Toyota Financial as well coming for the fall 2021. So really cool things to be. I mean, it's not it's not just, you know, oh, you're going to work, you know, at somebody's local business, like you're working at a real true corporation that really has a name in the corporate world, as well as really creates a name for yourself when you get to that actual location and you're able to move forward and and actually show that on your resume that you've been successful in a position and been able to, you know, really keep in, you know, really learn in those environments. So, yes. <laughs> that that uh, sponsorship with Twitter is huge. So I'm excited about that. That's great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be back in touch with you so you can talk to um, some of those students who we know uh, need to hear about Paul Bear. Definitely. I look forward to doing that. And thank you guys so much again for even inviting me and giving me this time to speak about Paul Quinn College. Y'all stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you.